Can't tell what weapon modifier you should be using just based off the in-game description? Well, I am here to help. My name is Barnabas Blue, and in today's depth guide, we will be covering all the weapon modifiers and most of the attachments and what sharks they are used best against. Before we start, in case you are newer to the game, you can view what modifiers each gun can take by going to the main menu of the game and clicking on Learn, then selecting the Divert Gear tab. Looking at this tab may be helpful to follow along if you're newer, because I'll be covering the modifiers themselves, as many guns get the same modifiers. Starting us off, we have the Bleed modifier. This modifier does damage to a shark while it is moving. The shark can remove this effect by staying still for a brief period, which seems to be one second from what I've tested. This modifier will also leave a visible stream of blood following the shark. This modifier is not going to be great against every shark, however. It will still work against every shark, this is going to be more effective against smaller sharks, and it will be the best against the Mako, Thresher, and Blue Shark, and it is moderately effective against all other sharks, and it will be a little better against sharks like the Tiger, Goblin, and Lemon than it will something like a Great White. You should be using Bleed over Toxin, as I said, against the Mago, Thresher, and Blue. The reason for this is that the damage it does is based off how fast the shark is moving, including if it lunges. The Bleed effect does not stack. Up next, we have a modifier very similar to the Bleed modifier, and this is the Toxic modifier. Unlike the Bleed modifier, however, though, the Toxic modifier is never a bad choice as it's good against any shark in the game. Toxic applies a damage over time effect to the shark that is hit. It lasts 20 seconds, and the only way for a shark to stop Toxin from damaging it is to go and eat a seal which will remove the effect. This is great for divers as it gives them some time, it gives them a little bit of breathing room forcing the shark to either leave or stay until they die. From what I have tested it seems to do a percentage of the shark's health instead of a flat damage. So this is going to deal the same damage percent to any shark. This modifier is especially effective on maps where the shark has a long distance to go and get a seal. The toxin effect also will not stack, however the bleed and toxin effect can be reapplied by shooting the shark again. Now on to tranquilizing rounds. This ammo removes some of the shark's stamina and keeps the shark from regenerating stamina for one second. Tranquilizer rounds technically can send the shark's stamina below empty. What this results in is the shark taking even longer to regenerate its stamina, up to even a couple seconds leaving the shark practically immobile for a while. Tranquilizer rounds are most effective against the Great White Shark and will be most effective at the beginning of the game against the Great White because the Great White can get evolutions to counter tranquilizing rounds and, from what I can tell, each bullet only removes 10 stamina from the shark's stamina bar. Now we have the Tagging Rounds modifier. These rounds help detect sharks by showing a red outline around the shark for you and your whole team, just as a buoy would. Tags last a whopping 10 seconds and can be reapplied to restart those 10 seconds. It will not stack and go above 10 seconds though. As a shark, you can tell when you are tagging because it will make a sound and you will see a red button looking thing on the dorsal fin of the shark. Any shark that is tagged is either going to see how many divers it can get before it dies or it's going to run away and hide for those 10 seconds giving the divers more time to gather gold and not lose life tickets. Tag will still be helpful even if applied to a shark that is already in the room with the divers. The tag modifier is always a helpful one and isn't necessarily better against any shark, overall it's just a good modifier. Going on to splitting ammo. This ammo actually makes your weapon do less damage, but it makes the sharks easier to hit. With splitting ammo you can be less accurate while still hitting the sharks. Almost like a bigger hitbox for the sharks. Unlike what I originally thought, when this ammo splits into three bullets, each bullet does not do 33%, instead it just simply makes your weapon do 70% of its base damage no matter if one or three bullets hit. Your weapon will still do 70% base damage. This modifier is very effective against smaller sharks like the Mako, Blue, and Thresher as they tend to be very fast and hard to hit. However, this is not going to be an effective modifier against bigger sharks like the Great White, Hammerhead, and Bull Shark. Proceeding to the sonar modifier, which can be taken on the harpoon, spear gun, and spear pistol. Sonar makes it so if you shoot near a shark with it, that shark will be outlined red for your whole team. This is helpful if you think you know where a shark is and you want to let your team know and be able to get a visual confirmation for yourself. It can also be used if a shark is running away so you can continue seeing where the shark is if you keep shooting near it, possibly even hitting it over time. Sonar will only show the shark for a brief period around a second. While it does not last as long as tag, 
you also don't have to hit the shark with it and you can use it to shoot around corners if you think a shark is there so you can know for sure. Moving on to our next modifier, drag. Drag can be taken on the spear gun, spear pistol, and volley jet. The great part about the drag modifier is you can also have either bleed, toxin, or tag comboed with it on these weapons. Drag will slow the shark's lunges down for 3 seconds after it is applied. This modifier is an absolute must against a skilled hammerhead shark. The hammerhead relies on slamming divers against walls, and the more speed the hammerhead has, the more effective its slam. Drag will actually reduce the slam damage by slowing down the lunge of the hammerhead. Drag is also very effective against a bull shark, it will slow it down, give your team time to get more shots on that shark, that way the bull can't run away and then come back in with rage full. Lastly, it's going to be good against Great White's, but keep in mind Great White's ability can also ignore slow effects for its duration. Great White's duration of its ability is 3 seconds. So if you shot a Great White with drag just as it activated its ability, the drag will have no effect on it. However, this is very unlikely though, since both drag and the Great White ability both have a 3 second duration. Drag is not going to be as useful against other sharks, especially the Mako, Blue, and Thresher, since the weapons that can take drag are higher damage and will typically kill these sharks in one shot anyways. Now we're going to look at the Penetrating Ammo modifier. This modifier increases the amount of damage that the weapon does. For example, it will take a harpoon from doing a base 300 damage to now doing 420 damage. It is obviously a great modifier, the issue with it is that it's usually a little expensive. Penetrating ammo is going to be a useful modifier always, except on the harpoon. While this is a great modifier for the harpoon, it is going to be useless if you're only fighting a Mako and let's say Thresher or Blue Shark. This is because the harpoon's base damage is already enough to one hit kill these sharks, even in the tail. However, it is going to be useful against any other shark as it will let the harpoon one hit almost any shark except for a Great White with its ability active. Next, we have a harpoon only modifier. This is the explosive modifier and it makes the spears you shoot explode on impact. This includes objects and obviously sharks. The harpoon will still do a max base damage of 300 as normal. However, indirect hits cause explosive damage to nearby sharks. I suggest not using this modifier actually for a few reasons. The first is that it slows down the projectile speed of the spear. On top of this, you can blow yourself up if shot at point blank range, and if fired too close, it will deafen the noise you hear the same way as if you're using a med kit. It also will create an explosive cloud, impairing vision temporarily. You can also blow up sea mines, sonar buoys, shark shields, and breakable walls, which is not very helpful to your diver team. The only time I could see it being helpful is if you already bought the harpoon and the sharks you are playing are smaller sharks like the Mako, Thresher, and Blue. However, you probably shouldn't be using the harpoon in the first place against smaller sharks like this. So, you might have bought a harpoon against a Great White and Mako. In this case, maybe you want to try out the explosive harpoon. Now on to scopes, and there are only two kinds of scopes in the game, a regular one and a night vision scope. Both have the same general idea of letting you zoom in to see the sharks easier. The night vision scope you will not want to use on bright maps because it will be way too bright for you to see anything. You will only want to use it on darker maps typically. Now the question of are they useful? The quick answer is no, not really. They are really only helpful if you already know where a shark is coming from. This just helps you to see the shark faster and farther away. I recommend staying away from scopes and relying more on the noise the sharks make. Most of the time people scoped in will get eaten from a direction they're not even looking with their scope. The reason I don't suggest these is because your gold could probably be used better somewhere else. We also have extended magazine on some of the guns in the game. This is pretty self-explanatory and should be taken most of the time if possible. However, there is one gun where it may not always be needed. This is the SCR UMP. On this gun, it already has a rather large magazine, so if you're only fighting smaller sharks using it, the extended magazine may not be necessary, but it could still be helpful to you. Then there's the APS Rifle, which gets a unique modifier called Heavy Barrel. This $2,300 modifier makes the APS Rifle shoot slower, but do more damage. Many people are going to ask, is this worth it, especially if you're a new diver and you're like, well, where's the fire rate? I'm going to go into detail on that right now. Heavy Barrel takes the APS Rifle from 35 damage a bullet all the way up to 87.5 damage. These damage values I heard from somebody else and through testing Heavy Barrel they seem very accurate. 
We're testing and recording the regular fire rate of the APS rifle. It is about 10 bullets a second. And with heavy barrel, it is roughly six bullets fired a second. This means that the damage per second, not accounting for reload time of the regular APS rifle is 350 damage. And the heavy barrel APS damage per second is between 500 to 525. This is a 48.5% increase in damage from the original. If you need to buy the APS rifle to hold off sharks mid early game, then later on this modifier is definitely worth taking against any shark. However, if you're fine with sticking with your starting weapon, the ADS rifle is usually a little better choice. The APS rifle should not be ignored though, it's one of the better rifles in the game and is going to be extra effective against tankier, bigger sharks with heavy barrel, but it can still two-shot a Mako with heavy barrel. If you enjoyed this guide or found it helpful or want to see my next video I post, then please subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you know when I'm going to post next. If you'd like to contact me, linked in the description is my Twitch and Twitter. I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments if you liked the video or if there's something specific I haven't covered that you'd like to see next. Also, thank you for watching and stay cool.